Onlar kirek var. Sol cihazda jogarda. Sol programı. Tüm etim olsun. Бір екі, бір екі үш, төрт, бес, алты, жеті, сегіз, тоғыз, он. Нормально все. Просто они для камеры. Раз. Переводчики, проговорите текст, чтобы наушники проверить. Раз, раз. Сейчас будем начинать. Пару минут будем начинать. Коллеги переводчики, текст продиктуйте в английский. Проверка микрофонов. Есть? Да, ничего страшного, не мешает. Все готовы? Да, они готовы. Коллеги, наушники проверили, перевод есть? Коллеги, переводчики, на английском в канал текст наговорите, проверка записи идет. Ну, больно, да? Ну, если вы поставим свой, а это да. 
Шоғада білесің, шықты ұрыс кейтің 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 Синхронисты, первый канал мы вас, первый канал мы вас слышим, второй канал проговорить. Первый канал про... слышим. Слышим. Құрметті мемлекеттік қатшы Әнтіне Бринген Мұрза, құрметті Америкалық делегация мүшелері және бұқаралық қатпарат құралдарын өкілдері. Бүгін Астанаға алғашқы ресми сапармен келген ақыш мемлекеттік қатшысы Әнтіне Брингенді Қазақстан сұрты істер министрілігінде қабылдауға ризамын. Мен оны мен осы ватқа дейін әртүрлі қалық қаралық үш шараларда және Вашингтонда кездескенмін, ал бүгін Блинкен Мұрза Астанаға ресми сапармен келді. Қазақстанға қош келініңіз, дейініңіз келеді. Бүгінгі күндің бірінші жартысында ақшы делегациямен өте нәтижелі кездесілер өткіздік. Мемлекетті қатшы Қазақстан президенті Қасым Жомарты Тұқаевтың қабылдауында болды. Достық және сындарлы сипатта өткен келі сөздер барысында екі жақты және көп жақты күн тәртіндегі өзекті мәселелер, сондай ақ Қазақстан Америка ынтымақтастығын перспективалары талқыланды. Ақшпен өзіра әрекестестік кенгейтілген стратегиялық серіктестік рухында дамып келе жатқан қанағатпен атап өткім келеді. Бұны саяси диалогтың сауда-экономикалық және инвестициялық ынтымақтастықтың жандануы растайды. Қазақстан мен ақшы арасындағы өзіра сауда айналымы 2022 жылы 3 миллиард доллардан асты. Бұл көрсеткі шалымыңыз жылмен салыстырғанда 37 пайыздан асты. Ақыш Қазақстан экономикасындағы ең әрі инвесторларын бірі, 
Казахстанда без жанрана ортал газе елдермен ақш сыртыстер министрлерін C5 Plus One форматында министрлік кездесуін аяқтадық. Орталық Азия елдерінен мен әртестерін қатысу күрделі қалқаралық жағдайда өңірлік байланысты нұғайтуға біздің ортақ саяси күшігерімізді айтын көрсетеді. Казахстан Америка құрыма штаттарын орталық Азия аймағы мен антамақтастықты нұғайтуға бейлдігін жоғары бағалайды. Бізді мемлекетіміз өзінің дипломатиялық басындықтарына сәйкес көп векторлы және тенгерімді сақты саясатын жалғастырып келеді. Орталық Азия мен Ақыш біздің негізгі серіктестеріміз болып қала береді. Бұл қабылдаушы тарап ретінде біз үшін C5 Plus One форматын аймақтық, антымақтастықтың өзекті тетігіне айналдырады. C5 Plus One механизмы өзін ортал казиядағы экономикалық қантамақтастықты, қауіпсіздікті және тұрақты дамуды үлгерлету үшін тиімді аймақтық дипломатиялық платформа ретінде танытты. Шара барысында азық түлік қауіпсіздігі, терроризм мен күрес, энергетика және қоршаған орта саласындағы ынтамақтастықты қоса алғанда кейін ауқымды мәселер талқыланды. Екі жақты қарымғатына стақырбына қайта ғорыла отырып, мемлекеті қатшының президент Қасым Жомар Тұқаев бастамашылық еткен демократияландыру мен зан үстемдігін қамтамасыз етуге бағытталған сәйси және экономикалық реформаларды табанды түрде қолдайтынын атап өткім келеді. Біз америкалық тарапқа екі жақты қарымғатына старымызды одан әрі нұғайтуға деген ниеті үшін алғыз айтамыз. Назарларыңызы арақмет. Рахмет, келесі сөз кезегі Америка құрамаштаттарының мемлекетті қатшысы Энтони Блинкенге берді. Thank you very much. Мұқтар, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for, as you very aptly described it, a very good day, both bilaterally as well as with our C5 plus one colleagues. And it's always good to be with you, and it's particularly good to be here uh, in Kazakhstan. Uh, when uh, we hosted your delegation in Washington last May, uh, the weather was just a little bit milder than it is today, but I think it's fair to say that the temperature outside is more than made up for by the warmth that you and President Takayev have uh, shown us on this trip. Uh, and I especially want to thank the President uh, for his uh, terrific hospitality, uh, for the generosity of his time, and for the very good conversation uh, that we had. Um, I'm here to underscore that the strong partnership, and in per particular the enhanced strategic partnership between the United States and Kazakhstan uh, is moving forward strongly. Uh, ever since being the first nation to recognize Kazakhstan in December of 1991, the United States has been firmly committed to the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Kazakhstan and countries across the region. In our discussions today, I reaffirmed the United States' unwavering support for Kazakhstan, like all nations, to freely determine its future, especially as we mark one year since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in a failed attempt to deny its people that very freedom. We applaud Kazakhstan for continuing to host more than 200,000 Russian citizens who fled their country after President Putin launched his war. And I want to thank the people of Kazakhstan for generously providing food, clothing, medicine, other humanitarian supplies to Ukraine including setting up those yurts of invincibility in Kyiv and Busha, where Ukrainians can find warmth and respite from the war. I also reiterated that the United States strongly endorses the reform agenda that President Tokayev announced last March. We look forward to seeing the additional concrete steps Kazakhstan will take to realize that agenda, expanding public participation in the political process, increasing government accountability, curbing corruption, introducing presidential term limits, protecting human rights. Those reforms are an important reason why foreign investors, including from the United States, 
are increasingly turning to Kazakhstan. American businesses were among the first to invest here, injecting more than $50 billion uh, into the Kazakh economy going back to 1991. We are eager to bolster uh, our economic cooperation, not only to strengthen the development and opportunity within Kazakhstan, but also to strengthen linkages across Central Asia, promoting the diversification of energy and export routes, among other investments, that will benefit Kazakhstan's people in very tangible ways. Kazakhstan also continues to be a valued partner on key global issues, uh, reducing the spread of nuclear weapons by dismantling Soviet-era missiles, contributing to vital UN peacekeeping operations from Lebanon to Mali, exploring the galaxy through space cooperation, repatriating and rehabilitating more than 600 foreign terrorist fighters and their families. We're grateful to Kazakhstan for its leadership in Central Asia and for hosting the C5 plus 1 ministerial today. This is the fourth one that I've had the opportunity to participate in as secretary, demonstrating our commitment to being a reliable partner to all countries in the region. Uh, we discussed with our fellow ministers from Kazakhstan, from Kyrgyzstan, from Tajikistan, from Turkmenistan, from Uzbekistan, concrete ways to continue to advance our shared economic, energy, environmental, and security goals, the C5 plus 1 is an increasingly important platform. Central Asian governments are strongest when they work together to address common challenges and to shape their own future. The United States aspires to be a steadfast partner in those efforts. We're working to do our part to try to deliver solutions to the shared challenges that are affecting uh, all of our people from developing clean energy to contributing, uh, to, excuse me, to combating diseases like COVID, HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis. Uh, back in September, with food and gas prices surging due to Russia's war of aggression in Ukraine, the U.S. committed $16.5 billion toward improving food security here in this region. Uh, we also stood up the Economic Resilience Initiative for Central Asia, uh, $25 million to expand regional trade routes, establish new export markets, attract and leverage greater private sector investment, providing people with practical skills for the modern job market. Today, I'm announcing an additional $25 million for that initiative, a total of $50 million to build up the regional economy, uh, and especially to make sure that people have the skills they need to succeed uh, in this global economy. To further empower and connect the people of Central Asia, we're launching an effort to increase English language proficiency for more than 1,000 young professionals in government and across civil society. So uh, we've had a very productive day of conversation uh, and a number of new initiatives that we hope will build on those discussions to the benefit of our partners in Central Asia. Uh, we sat around the, the table behind you with our colleagues from the C5 plus one, and I have a notebook filled with very good concrete ideas about how we can further deepen our collaboration and address in practical ways the challenges that, uh, that we're facing. I mentioned space exploration uh, a few moments ago. So let me just close by noting that seven astronauts are currently orbiting above us in the International Space Station. They hail from different countries. They speak different languages. But many of these astronauts journey to the stars together from Kazakhstan, and they will land here in Kazakhstan when they return to Earth. Uh, to me, that's a wonderful symbol uh, of how this country can be a launching pad for our collective progress on Earth, through the partnership between the United States and Kazakhstan, across Central Asia, around the globe. Thank you. Добрый вечер, Жанна Алпазбаева, телеканал Атамикен Бизнес. У меня такой вопрос. Запад объявил о необходимости закрыть пути обхода санкций для России. Насколько высокие риски вторичных суверенных санкций для стран Центральной Азии, в частности для Казахстана, и в каком случае их могут ввести, ведь из-за введения санкций против России страдают и наши экономики, в том числе Казахстана, Узбекистана, Кыргызстана. И что предлагает США взамен, ну, чтобы наша экономика не страдал. Какие компенсации? Спасибо. А, господину госсекретарю США. Thank you very much. First, let me start by saying this. Um, the sanctions that dozens of countries around the world are imposing on Russia, as well as the export controls, didn't just materialize out of thin air. 
countries came together to impose them because of Russia's invasion uh, of Ukraine. It's aggression against not only Ukraine, but against the very principles uh, at the heart of the international system of the United Nations Charter, territorial integrity, independence, sovereignty, principles that matter deeply to countries in Central Asia, including Kazakhstan. And so in response to what Russia did, countries around the world, including the United States, have been support uh, supporting Ukraine in its efforts to defend itself against the Russian aggression, but also to try to put what pressure we can on Russia to impose costs on Russia so that it stops the aggression, pulls its troops out, uh, and restores Ukraine's full sovereignty. Uh, that's what this is about. So it's important to put it in that context. Uh, we are watching compliance with sanctions uh, very closely, and we're having an ongoing discussion uh, with uh, a number of countries, including uh, our C5 partners, on the economic spillover effect, because we're very conscious that um, this Russian aggression has had uh, real consequences, not just for Ukraine, and not only for the principles I mentioned, but in very concrete ways for countries around the world, including here in Central Asia. Um, we're issuing licenses that make sense. We're sharing information with, uh, with our partners. And we're supporting the C5 countries in their efforts to diversify their own trade relationships. Um, so for example, licenses have been granted for uh, companies or entities in countries that are engaged with sanctioned Russian uh, companies um, so that they have time to wind down those activities and to cut their ties with Russia. It's not like flipping a light switch. We understand that sometimes you need time to do it in a way that doesn't um, harm your business. Uh, we'll do our part to strengthen the region um, and improve the lives of people living in Central Asia ourselves in concrete ways. I mentioned a few of them with some of the um, initiatives that we've engaged in. As I said, I announced $25 billion through the Economic Resilience Initiative for Central Asia, expanding regional trade routes, so that gives new opportunities, new places for countries to engage and to trade, new export markets, so that they're not reliant just on one country, uh, and then attracting private sector investment. Uh, and today, as I mentioned, I'm announcing an additional $25 billion to that effort, bringing the total to $50 million. So it's a long way of saying we're very uh, conscious of the spillover consequences of Russia's aggression. We're doing everything we can to minimize them, to mitigate them, and create new opportunities, different opportunities for partners here in Central Asia. Если позволите, хотел бы добавить, что между правительством Казахстана и администрацией Соединенных Штатов налажены регулярные консультации по данному вопросу об избежании негативных последствий для экономики Казахстана, а также во избежание возможных там различных вторичных санкций. С двух сторон назначены национальные координаторы, они на регулярной связи между собой прямой. И американская сторона, мы благодарны, заранее информирует нас о возможных кейсах, по которым, возможно, будут применены вторичные санкции. Поэтому я хотел бы сказать, что на сегодня у нас ни одной казахстанской компании или э, сектора, которые бы находились под вторичными санкциями. Спасибо. И нет. Thank you so much. Uh, Vivian Salama from the Wall Street Journal. Thank you so much, Foreign Minister, for having us. Uh, you actually just answered my first question, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Are you concerned at all about how deeply entrenched your economy is with Russia that it would take too long for, say, new allies, new partners like the US and Europe to be able to sort of fill that void moving forward? And uh, Mr. Secretary, you also just answered my first question, but I do have a second one for you regarding um, the potential Chinese lethal aid assistance to, to, to Russia. Um, there have been a number of public statements from you and your, a, a number of members of President Biden's cabinet expressing concern about China's deliberations. Can you elaborate a bit on what the U.S. and its allies are doing to persuade Beijing away from such a move and what consequences it could face if it delivers on any such aid? Thank you. Yes, uh, um, I'd like to say that uh, indeed Kazakhstan uh, has uh, very historic uh, ties with both with Russia and Ukraine. 
our economy is interconnected um, for long, long time, and uh, that's why definitely all this situation is quite heavily for us, for our economy, and we're trying to avoid any negative effects uh, from the sanctions. Uh, because you can understand that Kazakhstan is a member of Eurasian Economic Union, and uh, we don't have any custom borders between Kazakhstan, Russia, and other members of this union. So that's why definitely it's sometimes very difficult to manage uh, how we can provide this free trade by uh, uh, products and services between our borders. But at the same time, we're trying to uh, evade uh, any possibilities, uh, uh, to avoid any possibilities for evasion of uh, sanctions by Russian or even by any foreign companies. Thank you. Um, Vivian, as you know, this is something that uh, I raised directly with China's senior foreign policy official, Wang Yi, when I saw him on the margins of the uh, Munich Security Conference last week. And the, the backdrop here, of course, goes back to even before Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Just a few weeks before that, you'll remember that President Xi and uh, President Putin had a summit meeting in which they talked about a partnership with no limits. Uh, and that, of course, in the context of Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine, was a real concern, uh, including the concern that such a partnership might lead China to materially support Russia in its, uh, in its aggression, including with lethal military support and or with uh, efforts to systematically evade the sanctions that were being imposed on Russia for the aggression against Ukraine. Um, and as uh, I've mentioned, going back to, I think, the first conversation between President Biden and President Xi after the Russian aggression, President Biden raised this concern and made very clear to President Xi that uh, were Russia to uh, engage in uh, lethal material support for, um, uh, for Russia in the aggression against Ukraine or the systematic evasion of sanctions, this would be a serious problem in our relationship. So we've been watching it very carefully from, from day one. And the reason that um, I raised this not only with uh, Wang Yi last week, but also publicly, along with other colleagues in the administration, is because of concern we have based on information that we have that uh, China is considering uh, moving beyond the non-lethal uh, support that some of its uh, companies have been uh, providing to uh, actually lethal material support for Russia's war effort in Ukraine. Um, and what I can share with you is that uh, we did very clearly warn China about the uh, implications and consequences of going through with uh, providing such support. Um, we will not hesitate, for example, to target Chinese companies or individuals that violate uh, our sanctions uh, or otherwise engage in supporting the Russian war effort. Beyond that, what I heard very clearly from countries around the world that I've been engaged with over the past 10 days since these concerns have first been, been raised and, and shared with many countries is that this is not only something that would be a serious problem uh, for China its relationship with us, but a serious problem in its relationship with countries around the world. Uh, and let me just add this. Uh, China can't have it both ways when it, comes to, um, when it comes to the Russian aggression in Ukraine. It can't be putting forward peace proposals on the one hand while actually feeding the flames of the fire that Russia has started uh, with the other hand. So I hope that China will take what we said very seriously, but not only what we said.
That's important for so many countries to stand up and say, no, we don't accept this. Um, I can't speak to any specific uh, ideas, uh, plans that Russia may have anywhere else. I think its focus is very much on, uh, on Ukraine. But I can say that had we failed to stand up in support of the principles that Russia was violating by uh, invading Ukraine, that would have created, I think, a, a greater prospect that uh, Russian aggression would point in other directions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, I was going to ask a question that's quite similar to, to my colleagues. Uh, if I, Mr. Secretary, if I could ask a little bit more, the, um, the, the idea that you had of, um, you said repeatedly here the territorial integrity, independence, hmm. sovereignty of, of all the Central Asian nations. Uh, do you see that being at risk at all? I know you just, you just mentioned that you don't see anything specific from Russia, but what are the types of things that the U.S. could provide? Are, are those security guarantees, uh, if you want to put it that way, uh, diplomatic support? What can the U.S. do to ensure that those values are held? And if I could ask the Foreign Minister uh, a bit of the same thing. Um, you mentioned historic ties both with Russia and Ukraine. Uh, to what extent do you feel any, any threat, any risk from what's happening in Ukraine, not just on the economic front, but also the security front? Thanks very much. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. One of the things that we are working on in very practical ways is to demonstrate that the United States is a steadfast partner for countries in Central Asia. Um, our support for their independence, for their sovereignty, for their territorial uh, integrity uh, is, is real, but it's particularly manifested in, in two ways. Uh, one, it's manifested in helping them in different ways develop the strongest possible capacities for uh, their own security, uh, their growing economic prosperity, and the strength and resilience of their societies. Um, that's the best way to make sure that going forward these countries can determine their own futures uh, consistent with, with those principles. Um, and we're doing that on a bilateral basis and we're doing that, as I mentioned, through the C5 plus one. One of the things that we've seen in Ukraine is that its own resilience to uh, the Russian aggression, of course, starts with the incredible courage of the Ukrainian people, the uh, extraordinary efforts of its military. But I think it goes beyond that. I think what we're seeing as well is a resilient society that's resilient also because it has um, stronger and stronger institutions, not only within government, those are usually important, but also beyond it, including a vibrant free press, including a strong civil society. Each of those things is part of Ukraine's success story in dealing with Russia's aggression and in creating a country that's resilient to the aggression that can deal with it and that will bounce back from it. And so it's a long way of saying that, you know, our, our partnerships here, the work we're doing here, is also to help our friends in Central Asia build these kinds of strong, resilient societies with strong institutions, with ever greater capacity for their people, with uh, more and more investment coming in from the United States uh, and from other countries with greater connections among them because these governments ultimately are going to be even stronger when they're working together to, to meet common challenges. Um, and I think that creates uh, the, kind of, uh, the kind of region where um, their ability to uphold their own uh, territorial integrity, their own sovereignty, their own independence will be that much stronger. Yes. Uh I just uh, mentioned it, that um, definitely Kazakhstan uh, doesn't allow to use its territory for evasion sanctions, but it doesn't mean that uh, for today we, uh, we have or feel any threats or risks uh, from Russian Federation. As I uh, answered on to the first question, um, Kazakhstan is a member of the Eurasian Economic Union, Collective Security Treaty Organization, Commonwealth of Independent States, uh, with uh, other uh, states and countries surrounding uh, Russia. So um, uh, our relationship we consider as a 
uh, alliance uh, in the framework of all these um, multilateral uh, structures. And uh, for bilateral uh, cooperation relationship, uh, we have solid legal base, and, uh, which is more important uh, that we have the we completed the limitation process, the state border between Kazakhstan and Russia, and as you know, is the longest land border in the world. It's seven, more than seven and a half thousand kilometers. Now we are in the process of demarcation. It's almost 70% of this uh, border completed. Uh, we have uh, regular consultations between the government and head of states on the different issues. And as you know, Kazakhstan will continue its uh, multi-vectoral uh, foreign policy. It means that uh, we are trying to keep the system of the check and balances and to develop the mutually beneficial uh, cooperation relationship with the, all the countries of the world. Thank you.